Hey there, how's it going? It's been a bit since my last asset pack video and I'm really glad to be jumping back into it. Previously, I've made a slime, skeleton, and a wizard. If you haven't seen those videos, there's a card up top to check out the playlist. Looking through the comments, one of the most upvoted requests was a dragon because it would fit really well with everything that's been made so far. A quick side note, since I started working on this asset, Octopus took a big jump, so I'll keep that in mind for the future. As always, if you have a character or creature you would like to see, please leave it in the comments below. Or be sure to upvote if someone's already suggested it. Whenever I'm sitting down to make a new asset, I'm always going to check the comments of the last video. Before we jump into it, I want to thank Woka for sponsoring this video and sending me their Pro Mount monitor mount to try out. So I work at a computer all day long, but I've always had an issue with getting my monitors up high enough that I could sit with my neck and back straight. The Pro Mount allows me to move my monitors to any position or height that I need with a premium gas-powered spring system, making for a much more comfortable working setup. And installing it was really as easy as turning a few screws. It's been so nice, being able to sit up and look straight ahead to work has done wonders for my back and posture. Thank you to Woka for sending me the Pro Mount to try out and share my experience. If you would like to get one for yourself, there's a link in the description. Use the discount code NICK10 to get $10 off your purchase today. So, a dragon. This caused me a bit of trouble, actually. My first thought was that dragons are large, so I figured I could make this into a boss or mini boss-like character. I doubled the canvas size to 64 by 64 and got to work blocking out the basic silhouette. Things were going okay, but I could never get it to look quite right. The bottom half with the legs just always looked weird, and I kept messing with it over and over again. Every couple of days, I would open it back up, try something else, not like it, close it in frustration, and this repeated for a while. When this sort of thing happens to me, I just kind of want to stop working on it because I feel like I'm spinning my wheels and my time could better be spent somewhere else. I honestly didn't really know what I wanted, and I don't really like the size change. I was worried that at the scale it is, it just wouldn't be very useful overall. I'm a big proponent for the term kill your darlings, which means that we can't be precious with our work, especially if it's not, well, working. And for me, this just really isn't. Parts of it are cute, but I've been bashing my head against it long enough that I don't even really like most of it anymore. So on to the shelf it goes. I'll probably revisit it at some point in the future, but for now, I need to move on. Sometimes in art, things just don't work out, and for me, taking a new approach can really help keep the creativity flowing. If you've seen any of my streams, I run a program called Stream Avatars that allows me to have monkeys on the screen for each of my followers. They can use the program to decorate their monkeys with over 350 pieces of gear that I've made over the last year or so. A while back, I actually made a dragon pet that I have always liked. And another favorite saying of mine is, don't reinvent the wheel. The dragon I made there is super cute and right about the size I need, so I pulled it and reworked it with the Assets Pack color palette and lighting. I've also seen comments in some of the previous videos that people wanted to see how I would handle a flying character, so this gives a really good opportunity. My stream avatar's assets have very limited animations, so I'm just using the base and I'll completely redo the rest of it. I start animating by taking the base drawing and separating it into individual parts on separate layers. This adds a bit more complexity to your layer management, but saves you so much time later. Just make sure you keep an eye on what layer you're drawing on. For this character, I broke out the body, wings, arm, tail, and front and back legs into their own layers. So far, the other characters in this pack have had six frames of idle animation, so I wanted to keep that consistent here. I begin with the basic movement, like moving the character up and down in a flying motion. My thought is that this could be a patrol type character that flies back and forth and shoots at the player when it's within range, or possibly on a timer, whatever the game calls for. For this base character, flying and animation will work for both the idle and move actions. After getting the bulk movement down, it's time to start working on the wings. Like with the rest of the character, I adjust the position of the wings just to feel the movement and see how it looks. Then I went back through and made sure that where the wings connect to the dragon stays in a consistent place, and then started making the wings look like they're opening and closing. I don't draw wings that often, so I didn't have a great plan. It was just a lot of trial and error until it felt right. Once I had the wings moving the way I liked them, it was onto the tail. And for this one, I found that I needed to hide it and use a block in color to rough out the motion that I wanted. With the movement in a position I liked, I went back over it with the proper color and outline. Then I just made some slight movement tweaks to the legs, arms, and the head, which rounded out the base animation. Because I'm thinking of this as a ranged enemy, I need to give it some anticipation frames so it doesn't just shoot all of a sudden when the player's not ready. For this character, I decided to do a separate ready animation where the dragon breathes smoke and sparks, and its eyes become red and narrowed. For the attack, it then scrunches up and spits a fireball. I made a separate fireball sprite so there's a projectile that can be spawned in-game to match the one in the animation. And then all that's left was the animations for hit and death. Hit is always easy, you just kind of splay stuff out and give it a little flash. But I like the death animation have a little bit of flair to it. I said in the video where I made the wizard that I'm not really big on drawing gore. 
I've got nothing wrong with blood and stuff in games, I just particularly don't like to draw it myself. So for the death animation, I needed to figure out a way for the dragon to remove itself from the game in an interesting way. Luckily, this little thing is full of fire, so a quick burst of flames and a puff of smoke seem to do the trick. No, the irony is not lost on me that I don't want to do something gory, and my choice is to set it alight and burn it away. But I did it in a cute way, so we're just not going to talk about that. And at the end, here's the dragon asset. It can fly around patrolling an area, and when the player's within range or a timer goes off, it will smoke to give a signal that it's about to fire, and then it will attack with a fireball projectile. It can be hit, and when it takes enough damage, it will die. Overall, I think it's absolutely adorable and will be much more versatile of a sprite to use compared to the initial one I was trying. I still like the big dragon and will most likely take another stab at it eventually, but sometimes you're not feeling it and trying something else can lead to something even better, which is what I think we got here. This character has been added to the asset pack and you can download it now. There's a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. As always, you can use this asset for whatever you like, commercial or not. I just ask that you don't redistribute or sell the asset itself. Credit is not necessary, but would be appreciated, and if you do use it to make something, please let me know. I'd love to see how others are using it. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please be sure to leave a like and a comment about what else you want to see in the pack in the future. Currently, it's leaning into a dungeon fantasy type character set, which I'm absolutely loving. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell to make sure you don't miss the next time one of these is released. If you would like to get into contact with me, the best place is on my live stream at twitch.tv slash vimlark. Four days a week, we spend the day making games, pixel art, playtesting community games, or just talking about game design and more. We also have an amazing Discord community full of incredible people. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons who help make these videos possible, especially my video producer tier patrons like Cinnabunny, Clone13, Cortland Massam, Curdle Games, Nightfall, It's Jeppy, Jed Jed, Kevin Haugau, Killboy Gaming, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome people, and I truly can't thank you enough for the support. Also, be sure to check out Woka's Mount Pro with the link and discount code in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm loving working on this pack as a fun side project between jams and other games. If you want to help out the channel, and you know someone else that's into pixel art, consider letting them know about this series. I hope you're all healthy and safe wherever you are, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.